you're all crammed into this place. But there were some people who started screaming. They tried to get out, but of course the guards had locked the doors from the outside, couldn't get out. So I just sat down by the wall with my mate Harry and waited for events to happen. Couldn't do anything about it. There's all there was to it when it started, about 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock in the evening, something like that. No, nobody thought that Dresden would ever get bombed, and that was a thing. How did you get out? A uh, bomb landed outside three quarters of the way through the first raid. A bomb landed outside the, the building and blew the wall in, and there's only the other two walls and the roof standing in. Killed a lot of men, killed my mate Harry, and uh, just followed the general melee to get out then. And then when we get out, there's all this heat and fire and people trying to get away, screaming and things like that. People are light, houses are light, stuff like that. It's something you've never seen before, I've never seen that sort of thing before. How do you feel that the, the raid on Dresden was the thing that saved you from being shot? By the Nazis. I didn't consider that. that did, I mean, I'd rather have, I suppose I said once that I'd rather have been shot than all those people killed like that, roasted alive. I think a lot of people would think like that. It's not a case of putting yourself, making yourself feel brave or anything like that. Uh, stand against a wall, shoot, you're done. Just tell me about the moment when you were parachuted into Arnhem and what your impressions were. Well, the first impression, when because the doors came off the plane halfway over the channel. See, the do they take the doors off. We're on the Dakotas. There's about 20 odd, 22, 24 men in each Dakota. And they've given us the line as usual. The usual power is that, uh, don't worry, it'll be a cakewalk. See, well, we know it ain't. See, So when we get over, and we this is the second day at Arnhem, because the first lot jumped the first day. So what happens is that as we get over to DZ, we see all the smoke. The drop zone. We see all the explosions. And you jump out. And as you get down at the ground level, you see all the dead bodies of the lads you jumped the day before. There again, again, it's chaos. You were taking... So it's a matter of luck. You, 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 the majority of the, the battalion that I dropped with, the 10th Battalion, which was about, I think it was about between four and five hundred, maybe six hundred men dropped that second day and I think there was eighty left standing on the second day. Eighty. You, you now talk to servicemen and veterans, people who've served in Afghanistan. What do they say to you? What do they want to know from you, from your experience? People who, people who are engaged in combat who have had to put their head above the parapet, they don't generally talk about things like that. They talk about uh, ice cream and uh, they, they talk about what they're going to do when they go home. They never talk about uh, it's civilians you want to know about these things. Before we did this interview, I asked you how many times you think you, you nearly died and you didn't. Uh, you, you lost count, don't you don't know. I don't know. But what, what, has, what has got you through such difficult situations? What kind of. Optimism, I suppose. Friendship. Friendship amongst. Uh, uh, amongst the lads around you. And when you've been in a very difficult situation, you've had a very yeah. down-to-earth attitude. Yeah, you, you, uh, you, can't, you can't do anything about it. You've got, you've got to, I mean, uh, if, you're, if you're told that you're in a situation and it's uh, a last round, last man situation, you say, well, you know, that's hard luck, isn't it? Let's get going. And, uh, and there's nothing you can do about it. You put the brew on, don't you? <laughs> Cup of splosh. <laughs> See, cut the tea, get the cards out. Victor Gregg, thank you so much for coming in. It's been great talking to you. Yeah, it's my, my privilege.